Hello, crafters. This is Suzanne from A Creative Muse, and I'm here with another beautiful floral collection by Susan Tyranny Coburn. This is the Through the Arbor Garden Collection at Spellbinders, where you can make beautiful 3D floral cards, home decor pieces, and more. This is fabulous. There are six die sets and two embossing folders, one of the dice it has this great tub wash bucket that you can tuck your florals in. So gorgeous. All right, crafters, there's a lot of things going on at Spellbinders. The only thing I'll say now is that the Lucky You sale is still going on. That will end on March 12th. I will link my Steals and Deals video here so you can take a look. Maybe you want to add some goodies to your crafty stash. A lot of Susan Tyranny Coburn's floral dies past ones even these add-on pieces that you would use to tuck your floors and create a scene with are on sale within that lucky you sale yay so it's not all about saint patrick's day <laughs> all righty crafters let's get into this video let's get started first up there is mock orange two petals you cut it three to four times i love how she gives the instruction on here this beautiful branch the branch is three and a quarter inch tall by roughly three and a quarter inch wide. You get everything here to make your floral. She has videos, tutorials on the Spellbinders YouTube channel. You can also watch Facebook. It's Susan's Garden Club and you can watch when she has her live videos. That's always nice to watch as well. Sometimes I'll watch both just to get a feel of a die set because you would use the Spellbinders Garden Toolkit I have other floral forming tools, so I'm using what I have to make this. And there's also the Susan's Garden Specialty Cardstock, flower forming cardstock. That's what you'll use for all of these floral cards. Don't use regular cardstock. You want your stuff to stand up nice and sturdy, okay? And be a nice, beautiful card to last for many years or a home decor piece. She even shows you how to make a frame. Next, there is the Queen Anne's Lace and Ladybugs. This one I haven't made yet. I need to do this ladybug. I keep forgetting to do the ladybug, but this is just so nice. The ladybug is a tribute to her daughter. So pretty. Queen Anne's Lace. I can show you an example of what it looks like here. Next, there is the Carnation die on this bigger piece. This is at the bottom. Two and a quarter inch, okay? And then you layer up all of this. This is another accent too. This is beautiful. This is the bamboo trellis background die. So you can use just a trellis or you can do double of the trellis if you want to do a long piece like this die, the delphinium. This one can be very tall because in nature, this is tall. And she always gives you the background of all these florals, whether they're perennials, annuals, and all kinds of things. I'm like, wow, she could work in a botanical garden in two seconds. The trellis, let me give you a measurement on it. This is a really nifty accent for texture and it just looks really pretty. Four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And you can use this with your regular floral dies too, or whatever else you want to use with it. These little X's go on there where the embossed detail is. And these little strips were like the bamboo. I didn't even use this. I used this though. That's really nifty. I love that she did this. And you cut it once and then you just put them here on those X points. So that's really cool. This, the Delphinium. Reason you're seeing this as a package, I had to order it. So I don't have an example of this. I started working on it, but I'll show you when it's done. It wasn't in my package. It was supposed to be there, but I went ahead and ordered it because the examples I've seen, and I'll show you here. Hello, pretty. You cut this six times, and then you cut this two times. She always gives you the numbers here, and you can watch the video too. I would say watch the video work on it while you're watching it or just watch the whole thing and then go from there she'll give you the breakdown of why you need six of this two of that etc next this one is the nostrium nasturtium <laughs> oh i know i'm saying this wrong because i know she said it differently that <laughs> and galvanized wash bucket <laughs> she said it different and i'm like looking at it going did i write this wrong if you know what it is thank you <laughs> i don't <laughs> But it is a cute plant though. It reminds me of like an azalea. All right, this is five and a half inch wide by three and a quarter inch tall. This is fabulous to use within this collection with all the 3D florals or outside of. It's big enough that you could put sentiments here too. I did something close to what she did where the florals are here and the florals are out here. It's a huge card. 
The beauty with her dies is that you can go smaller note cards, A2 cards, 5x7. You can keep on going bigger and bigger. And then she even has a video. I believe it is both on YouTube and her Facebook where she shows you how to make a frame and then make something for someone special. If you have a few people you have to make Mother's Day cards for, this would be the collection for that. So super pretty. And I love when she has these accents. It also comes with a floral. I'll show you the floral with this because I did these two together. Super pretty. And then these 3D embossing folders. You would use a universal plate system. Both of them are oversized. Five and a half inch wide, eight and a half inch tall. This one has a die in it. This one is called the Arbor and Ivy. Oh, my mother loves Ivy. Yes, here in South Florida, but you have to grow it indoor. Her card with the Delphinium, I think, has this on the sides and then this Arbor piece. And I like how there's the option because even at this sizing, I can still do a five by seven, which more than likely it will be. And then this, love this 3D embossing folder. You do mixed media or anything where you're using Simon's Lunar Paste, Texture Paste, Tim Holtz goodies. This is a fabulous embossing folder because so super pretty. It has the honeycomb, some bee, but you see the loose way that it's done? You can really get to do highlighting in here and different textures. I think there was an example where I saw somebody cut around it and did all kinds of things. This is fabulous. First up, this is my favorite card from this collection. That's the carnation. Did not start out looking nowhere like this. This was giving me a few strands of gray hair because I had this idea of having like a white carnation with a little pink tip. It looked horrific and I just could not throw this away. But you see how her floral forming cardstock works it stands up even here so let me show you what i used for this because there's a few items in this one i use the trellis carnation <laughs> and that that's the floral here i was so stressed with this carnation and then i just stopped stressing and then just said you know what i'm going to finish this thing and make it work this was white with that tip one big bloom some florals, and then this five by seven. Look at that because embossing folder in black with gold splatter. And this gem, that's the Spellbinders Aura AB. Hello, isn't it gorgeous? And then I took some gems from my stash because these are bigger. The gems really bring this out. If you don't want to do the centers like this, just put gems and you're fine. If you don't have some of her pollen, dust, or pearls, you can go ahead and do this. And Spellbinders carries both of those. Had this done in a completely different colorway. Hated it so much. You know how I brought it to this color? Normally with this specialty cardstock, you would use Copic markers or Olo markers, which are alcohol markers. I was just like, you know what? No, I'm going to go ahead and do ink. Came in with some very bright <laughs> dye ink and it was so pink. I came on with gold splatter, the same splatter here, and I made it work. So this card is really black, with a touch of gold, I had this trellis made with a completely different card in mind. But I think it worked so well here. I cut it out with Spellbinder's Brush Black cardstock. And this is matte gold foil for those little X's. Had my carnation that I fixed when I got the idea of going in with ink. So you can also use ink with this dye ink. Then it turned out to be fabulous. And she can take water too. You can spritz her and then go in with the ink and do all kinds of things. So now my carnation is saved. I did not use that greenery. I only used that flower. Here's a carnation. This carnation also has these little pieces. I tried to use it. It looked strange to me. So I just said, skip it. So just have fun with it. I did bring in two older sets of hers. One of them may be hard for you to find, but so totally worth it. If I find it, I'll put it below. If anything, I'm going to put the name and then put retired. But this Ferns and Ivy is so amazing. This is from 2020. There you have ivy, but I did the ferns, this style right here. And all of the green, I colored with Olo markers. Love, love, love. So I tucked them in. I created this floral cluster. All of this up here with that sentiment. And everything is accented with a touch of gold and black being that neutral in the background, which I think gives this 10 times more pop. And then I also brought in Victorian garden foliage. That's right here. You can use any of these as foliage. Love that. And this, I did color it with Olo markers in bright yellow, but it looked strange. So I just came in with the same metallic splatter here 
and paint it on the leaf. Yes, these don't exist in nature, but I think it's a gorgeous card. Once I had the trellis, and then in the background here, I took some hammer mill cardstock, Distress Oxide, came out with some yellow and green, and created just a little square to fit this. So it's black cardstock, black, that hammer mill cardstock with the ink blending, the trellis on top, the florals here. This piece is popped off of here. This is popped off of here. So I'm using thin strips of foam here. And then this is here. These are not popped up. And then put the little gems on. By the time I got to this place, I was just fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and I think these gems accent it perfectly. And then I needed a sentiment. I did not want to put a sentiment here. So I remembered a viewer had mentioned to me when I talked about this is the Spellbinders Corner Rounder and Notch Punch. And a viewer had said, wouldn't it be great to make little labels like this? And I thought, yeah, you're right. I didn't even respond to her. I was like, yeah, you're right about that. So when I had this hard edge, I said, you know, maybe I should go in, take a sheet of cardstock, just a little piece like this. And you push it in like so to the notch side, pop it down. This is 110 pound cardstock and come in again. There is my little piece. You can use your trimmer. Spellbinders has a trimmer too. I've talked about this one. She goes all the way out to 17, 17 and a quarter inch when you roll this arm out. But on this side, you're getting one and a half inch. So I can line it up over here, right there on that line to straighten it out, pop it down like this, and then come on in. You see? And then I would do, I could do like this. And it has a scoring tool too, right there. And it has a low price point. Just saying. And she's pretty too. It's a great trimmer. And you go like this and boom. But you get the gist of how this works. So I love these tools. Spellbinders trimmer with the notch and corner. Yay. This style of label tag, you can do it any length because you're creating it. So then I did something like this and I tucked it under and I pulled out a stamp from my Spellbinders stash. This is a fabulous one. Love this one. This is currently in the Lucky You sale right now. This is the Floral Reflection Sentiments. I love this font with this. These are high quality photopolymer stamps. I just wanted You Make Me Smile. This is ink blended from Distress Ink Vintage Photo. Stamped it on with some black pigment ink and then the same metallic paint that I put here, here, splattered here is on the edges of this. I made this thing work. I think the gold is what sets it off. The little splatter and sprinkling and everything. And the contrast. Look at that embossing folder. A lot of detail, even on black cardstock, because it's a 3D embossing folder. Yay. Love. Up next, Nestorium. <laughs> I don't think I'm saying it correctly. I know she sounded different when she said it. So it's this flower. Here's the greenery for it. And I cut a bunch of these. This is one set. So you use a three piece and a two piece and you stagger them and you get this. This is all Olo markers. The pinks, the purples, and then this turquoise. And you do like a darker color here in that center. You see this bit right here in the centers? That's me following her instructions, cutting this, and then you put the snips on it and then you dip it in that powder. I'll put a link for it. It's a pack of pollen powder. Spellbinders carries it, so you don't have to go find it or go to a floral crafty store and find it. It really does work well. You just take the cardstock, put a little wet glue and dip it in there and it comes out like this. Wash bucket. I did cover up a lot of it. I cut it out with some matte silver cardstock. I did put some ink on it just to dirty it up a little bit. And then I was doing my floral arrangement, which just kept on going. Here is the trellis in the background. That's in matte silver as well. I did my X's in black this time. And then I made a very big top folding card. This is a six by six and a quarter inch card. Six inches wide, six and a quarter inch tall. Because I had pre-made this part and I wanted the width and everything. So that's why I went this style. This is a great card. If it's a birthday card and you're having a bunch of people sign it, bigger cards are great to give everybody space to sign. Some people want to just put their name. Other people want to write a whole thing. I did finish it off with one of my favorite Better Press Sentiment sets. This is You Are Everything, which I always say it should be I Am Everything Sentiments. I did the happy birthday, which fit right here. The background. 
This is a fun one. This is from Simon Hurley. This one is called Handwritten. It's a six by six inch stamp. Look how fabulous it is. Because it is a red rubber stamp, I did clear embossing ink with white embossing powder. This is detail embossing powder. Look how clear it came out. I just really love how this looks. Did stamp it in my Misty. So you take everything out your Misty, put this down facing up with the red part, and then you do the stamping. Oh, so pretty. And I did the heat embossing on this, put my little trellis, finished it off with some silver mixed gems, did gray in the background, black. When I put white here or black, it was not right. So a good color in between white and black is gray. <laughs> and also it comes back to this and then these flowers and the flowers gives the color and pop. Everything else here is muted with black, gray, and a touch of white. Love this card. So that is card number one, card number two love them yay and lastly crafters here's a smaller card this is a mini slimline this one features the mock orange two petals each like four in total but you go two and stack two see how it works i did olo markers here in the center and then left this white use my flower forming tools if you get the set from spell binders the attachments will work here on a tool-in-one, and it comes with its own tool-in-one and everything that you need to do the flower forming. I have bought bits of her set because all my tools are from about four or five different companies. So <laughs> but I'm making it work, okay? But if you want to follow exactly what she has, then you could just get that one toolkit. Or if you're just starting out, that's the best way to go because then you can do all of this. And it's not hard. She does walk you through step by step. Take your time, watch the beginning part again. And it's all just really pulling and getting these veins and coloring on the two sides. You don't have alcohol markers. She uses pan pastels. You can use ink. Just have fun with it because ink certainly worked here. Alcohol markers here, but ink worked on this. Why wouldn't it work with everything else? So this is the mock orange. See the branch here and the other branch here? I did one up this way and one here on this little mini slim line. So you can do a whole floral bouquet and still keep it contained. The centers that you're looking at here, those are prills. P-R-I-L-L-S. Spellbinders does carry a very nice brand of prills. They come in different colors. The most popular will be this golden color. You can use either barely art glue. In my case, I love to use the Distress Collage Medium put a dab and sprinkle it on. Both of them dry clear, okay? And then let it dry. And now my prills are good. Look how these stand up. I'm just using a dab of glue at the bottom of each flower on these branches. And then look at those leaves. So fun. And I finished it off with some green gems. Now I have a few things going on here. I had this piece done with the stripes. This is a glimmer hot foil plate from the March Kit Club. If you watch my Kit Club video, which I will link here because the March Kit Club is still open for new subscriptions until the 27th, it is worth taking a look at. This is the Storytelling Kit Club. Thumbs up. Pretty. If you watch that video, you saw this version. I had glimmered this first, but it was too stark. Black, white, matte silver, hot foil roll. So it's like gray with gray. So it's more muted with my little owl and his books. So I left this piece. I just put a die here to cut this down. Which die did I use? This is the Precision Layering Mini Slimline. A few companies still carry this. Normally, you always see me talk about Precision Layering A2A and the 5x7 Matting Basics. There is also a Mini Slimline. All of them I bought. Spellbinders did not send me any of them. I purchased one set, then I went out and got all the <laughs> layering dies because they're great. So I cut this piece down to get it straight with the lines and have a clean edge. So I used one of these dies in here. There are 12 dies each. You layer them up, you're gonna get increments of an eighth of an inch, okay? When I put the flowers against this, it was too bright. So I brought in Spellbinders Fog cardstock, which is like a light gray, almost white cardstock. And I used this beautiful throwback die. Labels 36, currently on sale too. This one right here, cut that piece, did my floral arrangement, had the stripes. I think this works fine. And then I just made a base a little bit wider, but it is still a mini slimline card. Just so much fun. Oh, did I show you what this is? It's the Glimmer of the Month Sketched Lines Hot Foil Plate. It is so much fun. You get this detail, which is 
this section and then you get sentiments like this but all the sentiments here are really themed towards storytelling but they can still work in here i could still have the florals and then put our stories my favorite in here for my sentiment i did use a glimmer sentiment this i believe is on sale too illustrated floral this is also a previous glimmer of the month from august of 2022 two sentiments in here that come with coordinating dyes sending happiness which fit right in there and thinking of you the black with the gold picks up on that gold and i think that offers contrast because everything else i put here you couldn't see the sentiment here i think it works together the black picks up on that black and the gold picks up in here but it is contrasting it's not lost and it's not too far out so i liked that i had this piece glimmered a long time ago i keep all my glimmer and better press sentiments in little bags in a box and when i'm ready i just pull them out layer this up a few times just cut out these pieces in just plain black cardstock, put the sentiment on top and pop that up to give height to this. Can you see how this is so high? If I had put this on here, it would be too flat. It would look strange. So it was better to pop this up too, but not so high, but high enough. And that's it, crafters. I am loving through the arbor. So expect to see a pink flower with this. And Susan said, this comes in every color, but you know what? There is no carnation with gold specks just have fun so if you wanted to make this black flowers go ahead you want to do white splatter on them go ahead whatever theme you want when she does talk about these flowers she likes to keep them close to nature because these really do have a lifelike feel but you don't have to always go that way just saying you do you there's no flower with a gem in the center but you get the gist of it and then you can also stay like this this was supposed to have little white lines in it I did how she said to do it and it didn't look right. Came back in again and colored right over it. The way she did it, it looked really nice. The way I did it, it looked strange. I just covered it up and then worked my flowers. Explore, have fun. Watch her videos. She's a great instructor. And if you want to keep it like what is found in nature, oh, she'll take you there. If you're in a pinch and you need to fix something like I did, go that route too. It's all good. Alrighty, crafters. So that is it for Through the Arbor Garden. Everything will be detailed and linked below. The only thing that I probably won't link is the retired fern, unless I find it. Wouldn't that be fabulous? But this is just so great to add to this. These are just beautiful, beautiful cards. Alrighty, crafters. Until the next video, check out all the goodies in Through the Arbor Garden. Stay crafty, my friends. Bye.